Psalms, chapter 70. A short psalm. Like sometimes we tell our dog when it comes to some rides are shorter than others, but a sweet psalm. It's in the Bible. To the chief musician, a psalm of David to bring to remembrance. And we look at this psalm, remember, help God. And you're not helping quick enough. Put a rush to it as man be. When we got trials and troubles and we want something, we want it right away, many of us. And maybe not be in patience, just excited. Or the trouble that David has. And that's one word that this psalm does not have is trouble. As we look into it. He says, make haste. Hurry up. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> Tell you what the psalm's already starting off at. To deliver me. I am in a situation. <clears throat> oh God. I need to be taken out of it. I need help. Make haste, in case you didn't hear me the first time, God. To help me. So I am in a situation I need to be delivered out of. I am asking for your help, God. And I'm telling you, make haste twice. And I've got, oh God, oh Lord. We put you into remembrance. What is remembrance? Have you forgotten all the times that God has gotten you out of trouble? That, oh God, oh Lord, oh my God. And God has come through. And I think the hymn is count your many blessings and name them one by one. You ought to record in your Bible, in your, your written prayer book, or a special notebook just for what God has done in my prayer life. Now, my Bible is marked out for the particular day of the year and to read the chapters so I can read the Bible all the way through and... I have notes with those corresponding days and then other dates that come up where I'm in the Bible and Lord, I need this. Lord, I need help. Lord. Uh... And when I come back through reading the Bible, I say, wow, and I can write down answered. If it was answered, I say, wow, there's another prayer that God answered. And I can look back, whoa, five years ago, look what God's done. And that's the remembrance. To recall and to think about what God has already done for us. So when God comes up, we have more problems. We don't doubt God. We know he's going to answer us, even though if it's a dire situation. Make haste. Psalms chapter 70. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. Let them, verse 2, be ashamed. Who's ever called, whoever is causing David troubles and problems. And confounded that seek after my soul for death. Let them be turned backward. Go ahead the other way. And he's not turned backward for repentance. Listen. Here they come, God. I need deliverance. Oh, make haste, Lord. Help. Here they are. Lord, will you turn them around? They're still coming, Lord. Turn them. Have them to flee. Lord, you need to hurry up. Here they come. And put to confusion. 
that desire in my heart. Why why are we doing this again? Uh Lord, put that doorway in front of them so when they cross over to that doorway, uh, why do we come here? What are we looking for? What was our motive? I forget. Put it to confusion, and he calls his song a psalm of remembrance. Not for the enemies, but for me, God. Of what you're doing and what you have done for me in my life. So I would think that somebody's coming to hurt David and coming to seek after his soul would be a great O oh God, O oh Lord. And we Christians have had some of those events in our life. And we want God to hurry up and answer. But God is long-suffering. And I said, you may not be impatient. But it just may be the situation at hand. I, I need to be done right now, God. And God knows. And God answers prayer, yes. No. And not now. And is that not now we go into, maybe not a panic, but we go into, uh, Lord, are you listening? Let them be turned back, turn around, for a reward of their shame that say, aha, aha. Reward? I've done this. What you told me to do. All right, here's a candy bar. Here's, here's a dollar. All right, you may go out and play. A reward. A kid learns all week his memory verse for Sunday school, and he goes to Sunday school, and he says, okay, tell us. What your memory version and he and he gets it wow he studied and he gets a ribbon or something and then if he gets enough ribbons he, he gets able to earn his own bible a reward or you know dad says if i do this chore i i can get five dollars oh i can't wait to get that five dollars i want to do something with it that's a reward but david let them be turned back for a reward of their shame that say, aha, aha. David's like, turn them around, God. Send them the other way and let that be their reward. Let the reward not be me. And Lord, not only do you turn them around and head them the other direction. It sounds well, doesn't it? David, David adds to it. Turn them around. And give them shame as their reward. <laughs> They're not happy. They've been put to distress themselves. And they get back wherever they're going. Well, did you conquer David? Did you get Israel? Did you get the land? Did you? No. We got our butts kicked. Or that's a reward. The kind of reward I want. Psalm chapter 70, verse 3, it says, Let them be turned back for reward. That's the reward. If you're out in military maneuvers like this psalm I was exposed with David, and you, let's go, we're going to battle. And then you come across an enemy that is three times more than your troops, and, and you turn around and run, and, and oh, oh. That's the reward David's talking about. Get them shame. David wants the enemies of God and him to turn around and run in shame. And Lord, make haste. You're not doing it quick enough. Hurry up, Lord. I don't think, I've read the life of David. I don't think David was, was the kind of man that was impatient. <laughs>
Verse 4, uh, Psalm 70. Let all those that seek thee, God. All right, what a switch around. Now we're talking about those who are going to seek after God. We're not talking about the enemy. Let all those that seek after thee, God, rejoice and be glad in thee. As far as the enemy, let them go in shame. But us, Lord, that love you, that you've given us the victory, and this is a psalm of remembrance, give us joy. Give us, yay, hallelujah. Let such as love thy salvation... Say continually, let God be magnified. God's salvation. You know who God's salvation is today? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's God's salvation today. Let God be magnified. Let's get a little closer look at God. Let's see God a little closer. Let's get closer in the scripture. And that's when, when you magnify God, it's like, okay, I read my three chapters. Uh, I can finish the Bible by a year. Okay, that's good. Close the Bible. Click, click, click on the TV. But when you magnify God, you're like, I'm going to study. Hey, you know what? That word shows up in the Bible an awful lot of times. Let me buy me or let me look up in a concord. Let me look up that word in the Bible. First of all, let me find out what that word means. And they say, well, let me look at the, the areas where that word shows up. Now you're magnifying God with one particular word. And when you're magnifying God and you're going through, you're reading the scriptures like, wow, I never saw that before. And that happens every year. I go through the Bible. It's like it's almost like that little guy in the refrigerator. I want to catch him shutting that light off, and he'd be like, "Who wrote that in there?" Let God be praised. Let God be honored. Lift up God more by seeing Him deeper and deeper. Who He is. Verse five. By the way, let God be magnified. Isn't this the same God, verse 1? Make haste, hurry up, God. Make haste, O Lord. And with David, he's not losing faith in God. He's just looking at the present situation. It's like, you know, David's like telling God honestly, God, if you knew what the situation was right here, right now, you'd be, you'd be, you be right here right now quickly doing it. I know you can do it, God. But you ain't doing it quick enough and you don't know the, 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 the situation down here. That's what it is. You don't know how bad it is. But God, you're able. You're able. Isn't it funny how we never say you're Cain? It says you're able. He was the right one. Verse 5, but I am poor and needy. Now look at the humbleness. This is the man that would be king. This is the man that's going to rule the nation. This is a man after God's own heart. When it came opportunity for Saul to try to destroy David, Saul said, hey, I got a daughter named Michael. I want you to marry her. I want you to go out and, and you know, kill the Philistines and get their foreskin. But, you know, and David's like, well, who am I in my family? What do I have to be called of the king's family? I'm poor. Gideon. I'm going to deliver Israel. I'm back here behind these rocks and bushes getting a little wheat for my family. We don't have nothing, Lord. And that is quite opposite of what today's church thinks. Jesus says that our church age, Revelation chapter 3, called the light is in. Oh, we're rich and we have no need of nothing. David's, I'm poor and needy. I'm poor and needy. I said, we got a house full of groceries yesterday. 
Without God's blessing, without God's love and mercy, I have nothing. Without God's love, I would not have salvation. Now, I want you to take your wallet, if it's nearby, I want you to open up your wallet, I want you to take out a dollar bill. And you say, well, I earned that dollar bill, or take out a quarter, I earned that quarter. Where did that quarter come from? It came from an ore inside the earth. Where did that tr where did that paper money come from? It came from a tree and other fibers. Where did that stuff come from? In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Everything we have and all our being, what we are, is because God made it and made us. I am poor without God. I feel sorry for the atheists because the God they don't believe in, they should not have absolutely nothing, including themselves. Because everything we have is God's. That's why you're not going to show up at a judgment, either saved or lost. Oh, here, God, here, here's, here's some coins. The coins are God's. The gold is God. God made the silver. God made the trees. And without that, without God's creation in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, we would have nothing and we wouldn't even have ourselves. We got to thank God always for what we have and what he's given us. And then he goes back to saying, make haste. <laughs> Come on, God, get my enemy. Oh, God, you're so great. You're so wonderful. God, you have not taken, you have not taken control of the situation. Help, Lord. It's been five verses, God. Where are you? I know he didn't write verses, but. But I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me, O oh God. They're, they're, o oh God. There's an enemy coming. He wants them to be turned around. O oh God, they're coming at me. Have you ever gotten a letter? Have you ever gotten a call? Have you ever been out in military maneuver? Have you ever been somewhere and you get word, we're coming to get you? And they even may give you a time and a date. We're coming to get you. And you're looking at your watch. Uh, God, it's getting awfully close. God, this last minute thing, not today, not this one, please. Oh, God, thou art my help and my deliverer, verse 1. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Verse 5. I am poor and needy. Make haste to, unto me, O God. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Look at the face of David. O oh Lord, hurry up. Lord, I need to be delivered. Lord, I need help. Lord, you are my deliverer. Lord, you are my help. It ain't happened quick enough, though. Because look what he says to close the, the chapter. Oh, Lord. All of verse one. Make no tarrying. Lord, I'm looking at my sundial and <laughs> I can see them now. Or it's getting close. And we forget to remember the title of this psalm to bring the remembrance that God saw yesterday as well as he saw today, and he saw tomorrow. God knows what's going to happen. God told David, you're going to be the king. You've been anointed king. But we forget, don't we? Now, I'm going to admit to you, and I have a little impatience, but I've been in this situation. And for me, it's been called, you know, overreacting. I get a bad letter in the mail. <laughs> and then calm down and settle it out and look at what the option and pray to God. But 
as I said, we need in our Bibles that we read or in your written prayer book or in a notebook if you keep, you need to record. And let me see here. You need to record what God has done for you. And I'm just looking for one right now. Just right here, 62617. Tracy, no cancer. She's got four lumps. Well, thank God it wasn't cancer. Now, she died of a cancer, but those four lumps didn't get bad. 122811, Tracy's in the ER. And then we got 3818, Lord. My dog has got trouble. And I got many things in here right now. I'm suffering from an ear infection. I'm going, I'm reading my Bible about this time. I'll be reading my Bible because we're going to be reading today. 1 Samuel 27. That's today's reading. A couple chapters. I'll be looking. Well, let's see. I had an ear infection that year. Hey, I got an ear infection right now. And I get distraught, Lord, my ear, I can't hear. It's like, oh, he answered that. Okay. Oh, I was in the hospital at that time. I forgot all about that. I'm not in the hospital now. <laughs> oh, look, the car had a problem. Well, I got a nice running car out in the driveway right now. Here's one right here about boils. I had boils. Well, they're healed. Thank you, Lord. And you know what I forget when I look at these, some of the things I forget when I look at these prayers that I have written down and mentioned in my Bible. Sometimes I forget how, how drastic, how dramatized was I at that moment. Like David in Psalms chapter 70. Some people say you get, you, you get overwhelmed, you get out of control. I don't think so. I think you're really showing God your true side of you. And God doesn't want phoniness. God doesn't want you to fake. God wants you exactly. Listen, many people tell me I'm crazy. I tell God exactly how I feel. If I am my, if I am mad at God, I'll tell him I'm mad at him. If I don't understand, I say, God, I, I have no idea what you're doing. Lord, I'm sad. Lord, I just feel today. <laughs> Lord, I, I, I don't know, have any, I don't have anything planned today. But Lord, something you want me to do for you. I have no plans for you today. I mean, no plans for today. Lord, it's something you want me to do, Lord. I'll do it. God wants you to be on, and David's being honest. Lord, you're not quick enough, but I know you can do it. Just hurry up. And that's one of the things that people miss with prayer. You're not being honest with God. You're not being sincere with you. You're trying to fake it. You go somewhere and say, well, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Most of the time, people don't feel good. Tell God. Take it to Jesus to, to him is. And remember what God has done for us. And when, you know what the things we're supposed to remember? The Bible tells us the Lord's Supper is reminded us of the death, burial, and the resurrection and the suffering of Christ. And it's also to remind us that Jesus is coming back. You know why? Because we forget. We're out in the hustle and bustle of the world. And we get a problem. And we forget that Christ is already taking care of our problem. We have a lot of memory loss. We walk through a lot of doorways when it comes to God's blessings. And then when something comes up, like, hurry up, Lord, hurry up, Lord. And God's like, and I've had, I, now maybe I'm, I'm aged and Christian. I, I have problems now. It will come to me and be like, didn't God answer you that last time? Didn't God take care of you that time? Now maybe it's experiencing, Lord, what he's done for me. But make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. 
And verse 5, But I am poor and need. I am nobody, God. Make haste unto me, O God. Thou art my help and my deliverer, O Lord. Make no tarrying. David has done in verse 1 and verse 5, he has taken at the moment, I am in trouble. And at the moment, I need help. And at the moment, you're going to do it, God. That's a man who has had lived with troubles his life. And he's in trouble now. And he says, God, I am praying to you. And I know you're going to take care of it. That's called assurance. That God is able. And he will take care of you. It may not work out the way we want it. Remember, God answers prayer three ways. Yes. No. And not now. And that yes may be a whole total difference. Of what we expect God to answer us with. So to be God be the glory. And we thank you for listening. And again, we'll be back on our Psalms chapter 71. We'll be back on Monday at 7 p.m., Lord willing. We don't do Sundays because I'm in church Sunday night. Lord willing, hopefully we'll still have the church service with coronavirus. And we'll pick up Psalm 71, Lord willing, Monday at 7 p.m. Thank you very much. Have a good day.